Hey folks, welcome back to Trendy Trading. Today is the BMA or Broad Market Analysis. I just want to thank you uh, for being here and taking the time to watch this. I'll try to make it as short as I can. I'm going to go through the SPY and the Qs. We'll look at um, the neutral strategy on both of those. We'll also look at the bigger picture. Let's go ahead and start over here with SPY. We are using the monthly chart. I want to go over the notes really quick. Um, basically up here at the top portion of my notes, um, this is important because this is letting you know how we look at things, right? Right. Um, so just know that uh, when price is moving down, we want to be looking for inside and up formations to the left. We want to be looking for trendy edges. We want to look for EMAs. We want to look for volume profile if that's what you're into. I haven't taught you volume profile. Um, that's not my go-to. Matter of fact, everything else is. Uh, but I put it on there because a lot of people are using it nowadays. Uh, wicks, candles, and structure, I teach you that as well. Um, and so that's what we're looking for. Using that information, uh, your next levels that you really want to pay attention to are mentioned here. The wick of the double inside and up. So your double inside and up is right here. There's candle one, candle two. I am talking about that wick there. So if you were to zoom in, that's the level I'm talking about. The 618 of the COVID rally, that's that level, the yellow uh, line. And then the back of the zone, which is going to be uh, the back or the wick right here. Okay. Those levels, uh, as you can see, 358 is the wick, 358.65. That's an approximate uh, level. Uh, it's not exact. Uh, the 618 of the COVID rally, again, right here at 334.51. I want you to understand also, though, that there's a base right before that where price could rally around 337.80, 337.5 before it actually were to touch at 334. So 334 is not an absolute, doesn't have to touch. Um, and the next one is going to be the back of the zone, which I'm going to use the wick of that first candle. Um, so right here, that is the back of the zone. So in this uh, level, what I'm using is this right here. Okay. That is my zone for this particular blueprint. Um, last week I talked about the, the 38.2, uh, will be your major level. It broke that. So it broke your major level at 390.15. Uh, and the YE was a major level. It broke that as well. Uh, so th therefore Fibonacci's come into play, uh, and we are basically below the 38 and we are, uh, bouncing at the 50. Uh, overall sentiment for the SPY was sideways to down in my notes uh, and BMA until we can prove that we can build value above the 30 minute and then we want to see and work on the four hour. It's a process. It's very hard to get convicted to the upside in this market, meaning like I'm not going to go full blown uh, long mode just because uh, we're bouncing off the 50. We got to take it in stages or at least I do. Okay, so if we break it down into a few more stages, we can come over here and see very quickly that the 30 minute. So right now the futures closed at 40 points up for our holiday session, which basically is about four dollars to the upside. Okay, uh, so if it closed at 366, that's going to put us at uh, 366. You're looking at 371 or so. All right, or 70 in that region. So we're basically just kind of moving up. The, the point is, is that we're moving up above the 30 minute. So that's going to put us at the four hour. All right. And then again, 370, 370 and a half or so is where about we are if we were to open up right now. Um, and you could see that would put us into just right above the cloud. So what happens on the four hour is that this portion right here becomes your support. So we're going to gap up if we gap up the 40 points, we'd gap up here and that becomes your support. And what we're working on then is up and to the left. So this EMA, this trendy edge, this gap fill, this weekly edge and so forth. Okay. So again, overall sentiment is sideways to down until we start to build value above these levels. We've already built that value above the 30 minute. Now we have to work on the four hour. So if I take you into here, all right, and we click on SPY, that would um, at the moment put us above 368.22. If we were to open up right now, this would be your support and you would be also in that cloud. So basically there is some confluence there. I um, mean, your targets would be 370, 373. And then even though I only have three targets here, obviously we would use the trendy edge at 377. And if it kept going, uh, we would be looking at the upper edge. Your upper edges are in play. 
Uh, matter of fact, we're getting a bounce from that edge from the futures chart that I gave you. Matter of fact, it bounced off the off of there almost 60 points, uh, which is a very big win for ES future traders using the blueprints. Notice that there is confluence here of the cloud on the daily with the upper edge. All this is going to be resistance until proven otherwise. Okay. So even though my sentiment is sideways to down, we're obviously positioned for a move up. Um, I'm just saying that we have to work in stages to the upside. Okay, that's all. All right. All right, let's go ahead and move over here into QQQ. Let's go ahead and minimize that. One, two, three, just like that. Let's go into the monthly and talk about this really quick. So this is your monthly. All right, and notice these are our notes. The monthly chart equals choppy to down and look for levels down and to the left, just like I was talking about in SPY, such as inside nut formation, trendy edges, EMAs, volume profile, wicks. Next levels for us going into this week, though, um, you're looking at 618, uh, 268, 22. It's a very important uh, level because that is the golden Fibonacci from where I decided to put my fibs. And basically, my fibs are from here to there that is the covid uh rally as i would call it this is the double inside and up and this is where we peaked out uh if we break the 618 the golden fibonacci says we have broken that trend um so again very important level for me um, the bottom of the inside and up is at around 259 that's a very important level if we break down below the 618 we could see a rally from there a relief rally uh, and that relief rally would most likely at least push us back up to the 618 where we could find resistance. Now, remember the probabilities. I just want to talk about them because they're kind of scary if for some reason we were to have some sort of crash. Typically, 85% probability if we close below the 618 that we're actually going to see the 88.7. Okay. So just keep that in mind. Now, this is the imposter level. And with the timing of the market coming into July and August with our um, looking at uh, earnings, it is very possible that we could hit, let's say we break down below 618. I would be looking for a big bounce here at the imposter level, okay? Uh, we are officially between the 618 and the 50. I actually talked about this, and this is nostalgic for me because this is one of my rules uh, that I first came up with at Trendy Options uh, uh, before we became Trendy Trading, and that was between the 50 and 618 is probably the most choppiest area that I have found um, in past studies. So just know that we are in a definite chop zone, and for me, it really uh, this is where the battle begins between bears and bulls, okay? All right, so that's QQQ. Let's come over here and we're going to go into the Qs. And really quick, um, well, never mind. We'll just uh, leave it here. So the Qs, again, the weekly on the left hand side, um, you know, you can look at it there, but we want to get our levels from here. It's a lot like the SPY. Um, basically, here's your risk between 274 and 268. It's a little bit wider than the Qs. Notice that the weekly edge is also in the neutral. Um, let's see, NASDAQ was up 124 points on the holiday session. It's about 42 points for every dollar. So you could do the math there uh, and figure out, you know, about how many dollars we would gap up. Um, so 40 into 124, uh, you're looking at, you know, three and a half, four bucks there uh, to the upside. And again, if that were to happen, it'd be a lot like the SPY. We would jump above uh, your first target and then this would be, become support. OK, one thing that I want to show you uh, all really quick is that um, once again, if we are using in my writing that I put in BMA, I said sideways and down until we can start to build value above the 30 minute and then we work on the four hour and such. I just want to show you that really quick. Um, so we would come over here to the 30 minute. And again, if we were to open up here, the market would gap up and we would be above the cloud. So that was the first step of um, the the move up. OK, so this relief rally. So what happens is that we take note of that and then we move ourselves up into a four hour uh, notice if we were to gap up right now um, that would put us into the clouds so what happens again is that the bottom of the cloud becomes support you can look at the neutral strategy and figure out those levels as well if you want to just kind of stay long as long as we stay above uh, those targets 
but as um, far as the cloud is concerned, you know, if we hold the cloud, then we can move up into these levels, like your next EMA, uh, the gap fill, the weekly edge, and so forth. That would be the same way on the SPY. If we came over here, um, you'd, you would see that we would gap up into the cloud. The cloud would want to be support. Looking up into the left, we have an EMA, we have a yearly edge, we have a gap fill, we have a weekly edge. Okay, so all these areas being resistance if we we're trading just by using uh, EMA clouds and so forth. Notice how that 50 is holding very well uh, at the moment. Okay, so that is SPY and QQQ. Uh, the next thing that I want to go into, give me one second here, and we will go into our broad market analysis. Let's do it like, oops, sorry about that. Let's bring that back up just like that. And we're going to talk about the DXY, so the dollar, um, just DXY here. If you're on TOS, it's going to be dollar sign DXY. Um, the DXY, I want to take it to a little bit higher time frame. Look at the monthly. Like, if you were in this and let's say this was just a stock, you would have to admit that you're a little extended here. And as we get close to resistance, we want to start seeing uh, topping wicks. Okay, so these are topping wicks. We did go inside, but unfortunately, the dollar decided to go inside and up. I actually wanted to see it go inside and down. But it looks like um, this, you know, this looks like what it's going to be is most likely a holding pattern in here, okay? And that may allow the market to rally just a little bit more. If we start to break down below the support, then I believe the dollar comes back down all the way into the cloud, kind of like the oil uh, trade that I'm in right now would come into the cloud and into this inside and up formation, okay? So that's what we're looking for dollar. Again, I put some notes out there. Obviously, you need to be careful uh, as long as that uh, it's bidding, you know? Right here, I got think of long, stay cautious above 103.8. You need price to break below. Uh, just a little bit of piggyback on top of that. You could still be long, just be comfortable with your allocation. That's what we went over today uh, in the room, and I really hope that uh, that helps you. Okay. All right. So that is the dollar. Let's go ahead and move on to uh, TNX, which is going to be the treasury. Uh, same thing. You know, this is super extended. We have a topping wick here. It'd be nice if we gap up and this stuff starts to come in a little bit and just settle down. All right, that's it. I just want it to settle down. All right. Um, next thing I want to look at is going to be oil futures. And the reason why is because I wanted to include this because I do feel like in order for the market to kind of calm down and us get some sort of relief rally, I personally want to see something like oil and energy come down we have a really nice inside um, month at the moment and we have topping wicks which kind of tells me that um, buyers are getting a little exhausted or i wouldn't say exhausted they may just be a little hesitant as we come up into this area i had this supply zone here or sell zone uh, before price got there and it worked out very well um, this is the reason why i went short and of course we could go to the quarterly and look at all time you know like something like this, all right, just like that. Right. Looks very good. If I come up here and I were to use the Fibonacci's and go to the pivot low, we're gonna put this on normal. Give me one second here. And I think it's norm, just like that. Good. You can see that this was the 88.7. You guys should know that's my favorite number. Uh, another good reason that I went short. So you put that confluence together and everything's looking pretty good. It would be really nice if we could start breaking down below 103. Um, that would be amazing. Um, so in order for, in, in my opinion, I could be completely off here. I could be wrong. Um, is that I would like to see continuation of a relief rally uh, in a energy and perhaps oil sell off. But in order for that to happen, uh, you know, we need to see oil uh, below 103 and looking for uh, that move back down into 95 to 90. All right. So again, that's oil future. So I want to be keeping my eye on that. Then I want to take you guys over here to the SKU. Uh, and again, SKU or your hedge funds are basically, you know, kind of giving you the idea of what they feel would happen. Um, I think it's kind of interesting. Hedge funds don't necessarily 
not all hedge funds know what they're doing. So sometimes I wonder why I'm looking at what hedge funds are doing, but they're supposed to be, you know, the smarter ones of, uh, so that's why we have this to look. Uh, but when I look through this, um, it's telling me, like I told you last several weeks, that we are uh, in an area where, you know, we want to see a move within 90 days or so. And you guys saw that I started um, some spy calls uh, 90 plus days out, I believe. Uh, let me just verify that. I'm not sure if that's 90 days or more. Uh, let me come over here. And it, it's 88 days. So it was 90 days. So I bought 90 days out. Um, and, uh, that's looking decent right now. It's just flat, um, which is okay because remember me trading off of this is a timing is the bearable. I can't just be like, Hey, I'm super long and I'm super convicted just because, uh, the skew is down here because that doesn't mean anything. All right. Um, so I have to buy time. I have to like have a stop in mind and have to have an allocation in mind of how much money I'd like to have in this trade. This is a time, time timing type of trade you know um it's not something i expect to work tomorrow or the next day and so forth this is something i want to see the market get a little bit more um convicted to the upside and then you know they start to raise uh the skew you know starts to look a lot better um meaning like the skew go gets back more to neutral and that's where we'll start trimming and selling our calls uh, also, I want to be in the trade before everybody else. You know, I'm trying to get in based off of institutions, not off of retail or uh, their thoughts on the market. I want to use my technicals. Okay. So technicals say right now risk on, but again, timing is the variable. It could be anywhere from, you know, three weeks to two months. I have no idea. What I do know is that price uh, if we were to put SPY in the background here, we would see that when the skew comes down this low, that the, this is typically where the SPY starts to round off and start to push up. This is a different market. Everyone keeps saying this is different than uh, any other market they've ever seen. So, you know, maybe I'm completely wrong. Again, uh, you need to be using allocation that fits your risk profile. All right. All right. So after skew, um, let's see what we got here. My overall sentiment, I talked about that. Um, the fear and greed is at extreme fear, uh, which is, you know, I like that. I prefer extreme fear. I want to be looking for things that are interesting to me that uh, can give me the most out of my my position. So Amazon is one that I'm in. Uh, you can see that these levels are holding so far. There's also a lot of divergence. Again, I would love to see price start to actually uh, pick up and move towards that 125 level. Um, we've talked about this several times. Um, this is a leap trade, so I don't want to be concentrating on a weekly. I want to be actually looking at the quarterly uh, and the monthly charts. We are very close. So I started early and said I was willing to add in here. This is definitely an area of uh, um, demand. And so I expected some sort of move out of here or close to here. Um, and that's why I started the trade. Uh, the USO trade, I just put a video out on uh, Twitter. Please go by and look at that trade. I also uploaded it to YouTube. Please check it out. Like it. Uh, please retweet it if you're on Twitter. That really helps me. Uh, I am a small business owner, and I believe what I'm doing here is uh, education. And you uh, tweeting and liking that stuff really helps me out in the long run. It gets more eyes on what I'm doing. And obviously, I am trying to grow, so I really appreciate you guys. Uh, other than that, my overall sentiment, uh, again, was sideways to down uh, until proven otherwise. So our big focus going into this week is going to be, can price build within the four hour cloud and start to move up? We had to have a lot of divergence between price now, uh, into the daily cloud and the weekly cloud. So there's a lot of room, uh, to move to the upside. And so being a bull for so long, I'm, it's not that I'm just bullish. I just prefer, and think that we're close to some sort of support. Of course, um, the ES futures, every time we get a bounce like this, um, it's it's uh, sketchy. We don't know if it's gonna last. Um, another thing is from the history of me trading is that anytime we get a bounce during a holiday, it's really hard to trust. They always seem like they fade them. We'll see, 
you know that's just something i'm saying uh obviously price will be uh the determining factor on that and so we'll see tomorrow when we wake up we'll see tonight the futures will open up again in uh three hours um so we'll know then what it looks like but my big thing there on futures let's go ahead and go over to es futures really quick is that we have a level right and we're going to stick to that level and that's that resistance level notice that off of the support um let's take these drawings off just so you guys can see really quick um, my support level was right here which was your weekly edge uh, the bottom there and it came right into that and what a beautiful move it popped up and the the cool thing about this is that it's actually um popping and closed over the 17th uh of june you know so that's kind of a big deal it broke a new pivot but notice that it's stopping right there remember always up and to the left you can see where that ema uh level is and going into tomorrow, um, let's go ahead and turn these on, is that uh, we're in that inside and down. We found that on the 30 minute for you guys. I'll let you know that um, we have to build value in here. It's almost like going back to the spy, right? Like we need to build value above T1 to the upside and we need to build value above the four hour cloud in order to uh, continue up. Uh, but our resistance, if we gap up and go up even more, just be careful if we open up around 3737, we'll just treat it as a line in the sand. We'll obviously look at the PMZ and so forth. And for some reason, we do fade this move. Uh, be looking to see if they bring us into a trendy edge or my green box. Uh, the overall um, high insight is uh, always uh, for you guys to understand that the green box worked. Every time price came into the green box, uh, prices did raise from here or rise from here uh, and on the reclaim you were able to make several points to the upside um, this level within the green box was just using a trendy edge uh, and that worked as well all right uh, looking over at the nasdaq uh, in q futures again this is uh, the blueprint all right and you can see right here um, did this happen that was 17 june that was your support down here we just basically flag in and coming right into the backside of this inside and down. Uh, what you guys need on NASDAQ is for value to push up over your next trendy edge, which it looks like it's going to be 11,4,4,4,0, sorry. And value above there could see a move all the way up towards 11,569. Uh, and then over that, you know, you have the trendy edges, you got some structure right here. But uh, things look pretty good. Um, the question is, are they going to slow down? And I hinted towards that, that we might see uh, some volatility slow down. I just kind of threw that out there because it's been, you know, very volatile. And uh, people are used to these really big moves. And I just know the market. And if I were in charge of the market, I would slow down uh, that dial. I would turn that dial back on the volatility and basically any trader that's trying to buy out of the money and they're not getting the volatility that they're used to, your premium is going to get sucked out big time. And why not doing that? Why not do that during a four day weekend? Cause uh data is already against you, right? So just keep that in mind. It might be a credit spread kind of week. Uh, we'll determine that again, once we open, uh, and I'll talk about that tomorrow morning. I can't wait to uh, trade with you guys. And as always, I really appreciate your participation. So if you're free, please participate. Um, that's all, folks. Uh, you have a great uh, day. I hope you enjoy this video. And even though obviously I know you guys like me or you wouldn't be here, please hit the uh, like video if we happen to put out any content on Twitter or YouTube. Uh, I am trying to monetize on YouTube and I appreciate all of your support. Thank you so much and have a trendy day.